Hey guys, how's it going? Celtic Reviews, and I'm doing a Blu-ray video today. Um, I got my Screen Factory Blu-rays right here next to me. Basically, as a way for you guys to see, because I don't know how many of you guys want to start collecting Screen Factory Blu-rays. I'll tell you right now, it's become an addiction for me, because I love Screen Factory. I love the shit they release. So I have a good bit here, including a big box set. I'm going to be going over what I think of each release, which is something I haven't done yet. This is my collection so far. I want to preface that, because... I'm planning on getting more. The next one, I want to get Slither. But keep in mind, as this is going to be... This is just a for now collection. So, there's a good bit here to go over. So, what I'm going to be doing is talking about how I feel this release is. If it's worth the price point. And tell you guys my overall opinion on it. So, up first, we got Army of Darkness. Um, this is the third Evil Dead movie. And it's not my favorite. Um, well, I mean, it's probably be my... If we're including the TV show, I would say this is probably my third favorite Evil Dead thing. Because in last place, in my opinion, is the first Evil Dead movie. It's still great, but it's just not as good as Evil Dead 2. And then it'll be Eve, Army of Darkness, and then Evil Dead 2, and then Ash vs. Evil Dead. Because I, I honestly really love the TV show. I wish it would have kept going, but they didn't. So uh, you get three different, uh, four, actually four different cuts of the movie on this thing. You get theatrical, directors, international and tv cut uh keep in mind the tv cut is not in hd it is the standard definition i think it'll be kind of hard to tr <laughs> hd transfer that it it doesn't look too horrible but you can tell it's a tv cut <laughs> um the the only one that has a new scan of the movie is the international cut with a 4k scan of the inner positive so yeah uh let's like say you get three discs on the inside of the case you got your theatrical cut, your director's cut, and your international slash TV cut uh, for $30. And if you're an Evil Dead fan, this is definitely worth to add to your collection. I recently just got also the Evil Dead, the Groovy collection, and it doesn't include Army of Darkness. So if you got that box set, definitely pick this up. I know they're doing a 4K transfer. I don't know if anyone wants to wait for that. Um, I would honestly say wait until they announce what's going to be in it because if it's anything like this and they add in a little bit more into this it'll be a worthwhile set hopefully they do that i don't know if they will they probably might just do the director's cut for uh transferred over to 4k if they do that just stick with getting the original army of darkness release and it has four different cuts in the movie and trust me it is an amazing experience watching all of them i would highly recommend it for the price up next big trouble in little china uh, a great John Carpenter film. I will say this. Um, for 12 bucks, this is a steal. Because not only is the picture quality amazing, but the amount of bonus features are on this set release is fucking mind-blowing. They have a ton here. Um, it's mainly just a lot of new interviews. But they are very interesting to watch. Uh, you do get this gorgeous cover art right here. Um, open up the inside, you have your, you have your movie disc, and you have your special features disc, which all have nice artwork. Uh, the reversible cover on this one is actually not too shabby, if I do say so myself. Although, I do hate that it doesn't have collector's edition at the top. It is just the original poster. I really wish they would add a collector's edition at the top to let people know that, hey, this is a Screen Factory release. Because, as you'll notice, a lot of the midway point of Screen Factory releases started putting collector's editions at the top of their releases. Um, you'll, you'll see more of that as I'm going along. Trying to put this back in neatly. Looks off. I'm very particular. Okay, we're good. But as you can see, it has collector's edition at the top. But for 12 bucks, which is what I paid for it, it's a steal. If you've never seen this movie, I would highly recommend it. It's very funny and very weird. It's a very, this is probably the weirdest John Carpenter film I've ever watched. So, if you're into weird, definitely watch this movie. Up next, we got another weird movie. Bruce Campbell, another one. Bubba Hotep. Um, have you ever wanted to see Bruce Campbell fight an Egyptian mummy who wears Las Vegas clothes? And basically, Bruce Campbell plays a Elvis impersonator who thinks he's actually Elvis. This is your movie. Uh, it's very fucking weird, but fun as hell to watch. Um, the, the picture quality 
and the audio transfer are nothing short of spectacular. It looks great to watch. I have no problems. Um, I will say the bonus features are really good here. Just like, you no, know, well, most of Screen Fighter releases, they have good, good, very, very good bonus materials included. Now, I will say the disc is a bit boring. Normally, uh, Screen Fighter does some nice artwork. This one just has Bruce Campbell from the movie. Um, which is not terrible, but I really wish they would have done like some new artwork or at least just use this because it is nice. Uh, the reverse cover you get here again, just like most Screen Fighter releases, is the original artwork. Um, this is your reversible sleeve, and this is why I was talking about I wish Big Chill and Little Giant included. They include Collector's Edition right at the top, which makes people know, hey, this is a Screen Factory release. I kind of wish, like I said, it, it really sucks that Big Trouble and Little China didn't do that. But at the same time, I mean, it, it, I prefer the Screen Factory. Most of the time, I prefer the Screen Factory covers more than anything. Um, but yeah, if you've, uh, if you've never seen Bubba Hotep, this is a good movie. Now, I will say the price of this is a bit ridiculous. So, even while this was on the sale, I don't know if it's because this is about to go out of print or something. I don't know if this even is going out of print or not. This thing was $30. Now, it is a very good movie, but if this is, I would recommend this only if you're a diehard Bruce Campbell fan or a diehard Bubba Hotep fan. If you want to watch this movie, I suggest renting it first, watching it, and if you like it enough, buy the Screen Factory release because this is the best release they have ever done for this film. It is truly beautiful. But I don't think it's... I would say wait until you watch the movie or if you're a diehard Bruce Campbell fan, definitely get it. But it's, <laughs> it's definitely pricey. Up next, we got the original Candyman. Now, when I did an unboxing of this, I allotted that this is the perfect Screen Factory release, and that still holds true to this day. Not only is the picture and audio transfers absolutely breathtaking and stunning, but the amount of bonus material on this release will leave you watching it for days on end. It is absolutely it's just mind-boggling, right? You get a ton of new uh, restorations. You get a 2K restoration from a new 4K scan of the original film negative for both the theatrical and uncut version. Um, you get some gorgeous artwork on the front. Um, beautiful disc art uh, using the Screen Factory cover and the original cover, which honestly I can show you right here. This is the, uh, the reverse slip cover on here. And again, has collector's edition on the top. So in case you want to flip it over, you can. Um, the only problem I have is that I don't feel like there was a need to release the unrated version because from what I saw by watching both cuts back to back, it just seemed like the unrated had like a slightly longer kill scene. I could be wrong. You guys let me know down below. It just seemed like it had just a just one extended scene and that was it. This is something from being a great release though. Coming in at $9 that I got this for, brand new on Amazon. It definitely is a fucking steal. And if you're just wanting to get into collecting Screen Factory Blu-rays, I suggest starting with Candyman because it is fucking awesome. All right, up next is a one that I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for because I honestly really do love it. It's a remake of a George Romero classic, Dawn of the Dead. I fucking love this remake. I don't care what anyone says. I think this remake is well done by Zack Snyder and well written by James Gunn. It is a really good fucking remake. And I understand people don't like it because they did break George Romero rules of the zombies. But when the original creator, George Romero, says he loved the movie, you know you did something right. This transfer came in at $20 even. Uh, this comes with a theatrical and uncut version. Um, these transfer, this transfer honestly looks just as good as like a blue, like it definitely looks better because there's the original Blu-ray release that looked horrible because it's one of the earlier Blu-ray releases. This takes that Blu-ray release and makes it look better. Now I'm not saying like, oh, this is the, they may do a 4k version of this, which I hope so. It looks good. It's not the best looking screen fighter Blu-ray I have. It looks like a modern day Blu-ray. But the slipcover, which I was lucky enough to get the one with slipcover, looks very gorgeous, very nice, except for this annoying ass fucking sticker there telling you, this is Zack Snyder's exciting take on the zombie classic. But this is, uh, they use the original poster art for the reverse, which I, when I get a slipcover, I always do the reverse. 
always. So you get both best of both worlds. Uh, again, just with Bubba Hotep, I feel like the disc could have been better. It looks boring to just go scenes from the movie. But you get a ton of bonus material here. There's not a lot of new stuff Spring Factory added for this release, I will say. But the stuff you do get is very entertaining. And for 20 bucks, and if you're a fan of Dawn of the Dead, you'll probably want to pick this up. It is an amazing, amazing purchase and an amazing movie if you've never seen it. And honestly, this is a movie where I honestly do love both the theatrical and unrated cut, about as equally. You know, there's some days I want to watch the theatrical cut, some days I want to watch the extent, uh, unrated cut. It's really weird. But this just does the HD master from the 2K digital intermediate. So, I, it looks like they just took the digital footage from the camera they used to film the movie on and just upscaled it. It does look like, to me, they just took the blue original Blu-ray release and upscaled it to me. But I could be wrong, but it's still a pretty good release by them. Um, next is probably the one I spent the most money on and what started that whole troll thing, Drag Me to Hell. This release was expensive. I don't know, again, just a bubble hut up. I don't know if this is going out of print soon. I don't know if they're running out of stock on this. I don't know what's going on. This thing cost me $35. I don't know why it costed me that much, but it did. And I'm lucky enough that when I got it, it came with the slipcover, which I will say this is honestly my favorite, one of my favorite artworks by Screen Factory. I mean, look at this. It is very nice. Now, I would not recommend anyone get this one. I'm not saying that's because it's bad, because of how the price is. It's 35 fucking dollars when I bought it. It could be down now. It could have been more expensive now. Who knows? But what you get here is the HD Master taken from the uh, taken. Uh, oh fuck, can't speak. HD Master of the theatrical cut taken from the 2K digital intermediate. So basically the same to what they did with Dawn of the Dead. It looks good. I think they. I wish they would have done a 4K scan instead, but I understand why. Uh, this is your reversible artwork, which is just the poster. And I will say this. The disc art is fucking cool as shit. So you got your original poster and the Scream Factory one, and it looks fucking sick. Um, the content here you get, not a ton. I will say I was kind of let down by the bonus materials on this thing. I mean, it feels like they did just slap a few new things in there, but it doesn't feel like as expansive as like the Candyman release. It feels good. I'm not, I would say this would be worth like 20 bucks, but 35 is stretching it just a bit. Um, but it's still a good release. Uh, great picture quality. Well, good picture quality. I wish they would have, like I said, done a 4K scan. But the HD scan of this movie is really good. And I'm not going to complain much about it. It is good. It's not horrible. And that's the thing I want to say with all these, well, except for a few nitpicks. All these Screen Fighter releases do have great picture quality. Range from good to great to fantastic. So keep that in mind. But Drag Me to Hell, I would say wait till you find it or... Just get the normal Blu-ray release if you're not into this movie, or... This movie's a bit iffy with people. Either you love it or you hate it. I'm one of the few people who loved it, so... I do love Drag Me to Hell, so... Yeah, uh, and it does come with the unrated and theatrical cut. This one here is my new one. I just bought this. And this is my first 4K Ultra HD Scream Factor release. And I'm so happy it was this movie in particular. I have such a love for this movie... I actually just watched it last night, and I got so much praise to scream about it. Krampus, the naughty cut. Man. This was a this is a fun fucking movie. If you have never seen any of this, you, if you've never seen Krampus, please do so. It's easily probably my favorite Michael Doherty film. Uh, out of the two he's made, he made this in Trick or Treat. It's amazing. So, the reason why I went out and got this is because... I just love this movie. I was going to do an unboxing, but I immediately wanted to watch it. But what you get with this movie is not the theatrical cut, which does bum me out a bit. You get the naughty cut of the movie, which is its rated R version. Now, you might be thinking, oh, does that mean it include Blood and Guts? Unfortunately, no. What you get here is just a more profanity-focused Krampus. There's a, there's a lot there's a few, a lot more cuss words in well. It feels like Michael Doherty threw in some cuss words in this movie, you know, like, it doesn't feel like it's naughty. Like, it feels naughty in a vulgarity sense, but also hoping for, like, blood and gore. 
This doesn't stop me from being a good release, though. Coming in for me when I got on a limited time sale on Amazon for 20 bucks. I don't think it was like 25, close to 30. It is a good 4K scan. But it just feels like they took the Blu ray and just upscaled it. That's what it feels like to me, at least. Um, I'm not saying it's bad. It is a good transfer. It's just, it left me wanting more. But I will say, what this thing does deliver on is its bonus material. The new interview with Michael Doherty. Oh my God, it's fucking cool. They go over the digital and the practical effects. They go over a lot of that shit. And like I said, for this release, it's pretty fucking good. You get nice disc art. You got your 4K Blu-ray here and your Blu-ray here. Uh, your Blu-ray will be housing most of your bonus material. The reverse artwork, I have not seen yet. It is literally the original poster with just the naughty cut put on it. Um, I mean, if you're into Krampus like I am, I would suggest getting it. I believe the limited time sale is still going on on Amazon. I want to put the reversible artwork on this. Because I feel like, because like I said with the slipcover ones, I put the reversible artwork on it all the time. There we go. And of course, it does have that Claire's Edition on the top. Um, right now, I think without it on sale, it's like 40 bucks. Don't get it at that price. Wait for a sale. It is a good transfer. I just wish the cut was more naughty, per se. The picture quality is good. Good for what it is. And I feel like, I don't know, with this one, I think they could have, I'm, I know I said I was going to scream his praises, but where the praise does truly come in is the bonus material and the really sexy artwork on it. I do love it, but it, it does feel a bit like meh, you know, like it, it is a good release, but not $40 good. It's like 20 bucks good, which is, I think I paid a little bit extra for it. I mean, I got my money's worth because I'm probably, I'm going to watch this movie every Christmas, but, and I can finally get rid of my original release on Blu-ray that I'm probably just going to give to my family. But yeah, I do love Krampus. I think it's a good horror film, and I love it. Um, next, we got My Bloody Valentine. Um, this this one came in at, I think, $15 on sale. Um, so this one has a 4K scan of the original camera negative, and it, has, it looks clean while at the same time looks gritty. And I love that look in, like, restorations of old films. This has that. This is what I really fucking wanted from Big like uh, Big Trouble Little China, and I wanted this in like the Dawn of the Dead release and the Jeremy Held release is like an actual scan, and this looks fucking gorgeous. And the bonus material, shit, I'm still going through that shit today. There's a ton here. Um, I will say that uh, unlike a movie run against you next, the cut kills in the unrated version are actually they actually restored them and made it look like they're part of the movie now they do look a bit gritty like the grittier than the rest of the film but they actually took the effort to do it which is what i like and it is a very fun movie if you haven't seen it. this is not the shitty remake this is actually the original so if you haven't seen it yet it is really good and here is the original artwork uh which is just the original poster uh, i don't use the original poster i honestly use screen fighter one for this one because i like it but yeah it is a good release especially for 15 bucks it's pretty good this is the one i'm probably going to have a lot of issues with this is the release of silent night deadly night now when it comes to the bonus material it knocks it out of the park when it comes to the theatrical fucking like transfer it looks good my problem is unlike with my bloody valentine they only did a HD transfer from the original camera negative. It doesn't look as good. Now keep in mind, when I bought this... Oh, shit. <laughs> I bought this at the same time. And I watched Blind Billy Valentine first. And when I popped this in, I'm like, oh, hell yeah. It's going to be fucking sick looking. It really wasn't. <laughs> Especially when you get to the unrated version of the movie. Unlike My Blood of Valentine with its gorgeous looking unrated cut of the movie. This one, the cut kills that are put back in are in standard definition. And it even says it right here. AC transfer the original camera negative with standard definition inserts. They didn't take the time to even transfer. And I don't know if because the footage was too rough or what. 
it sucks that they weren't able to do it. And for me paying $20 for this, 20, keep in mind, I paid $10 for Candyman. I paid, tw I paid 15 for my bloody Valentine. I expected more. It is a decent release. It is good, but I was expecting more. But the discard is nice, and the artwork is gorgeous. And in case you want to flip over the cover, this is the reversible sleeve you're going to get, which is the that's the original poster. But yeah, it. This is the one I had the most problems with. I would. It's hard to recommend this one because of the the horrible inserts they did. It is still a fun movie to watch during Christmas. Probably about actually about to pop it in now. I mean, honestly, what sucks is that I was really looking forward to the uncut version, but with all the... It it puts you out of it because you're watching it in, like, this good-looking transfer. I will, it's not great. It's good-looking. And then it goes from 1080p to fucking 144p, whatever the fuck it was. I think it was, like, 480 or something. It looks off, and it doesn't look good, and it takes you out of the movie because it just goes from HD to the standard definition back to HD and you're just like the fuck happened I mean it's cool to have I'm probably just going to keep watching the theatrical cut because it looks gorgeous but I, I was really disappointed I don't know if I can recommend it I mean for 20 bucks you make a decision would you get it that's that's up to you up next uh the 1988's uh the blob this movie's good I will say I wish there was more bonus materials in this. This one's really lacking in featurettes. I was really hoping for like how they made the blob and like a documentary on it or something in this, but we really don't don't get that. We honestly get a pretty bland cover for this one. And the only reason why I don't swap it is because I think the cover on the original release is also not that good. I don't like the original poster release of the remake of the blob. But it, is, it, it has a nice transfer. It has nice audio transfer. Coming in at like 13 bucks. It's a good release. But if you're big into bonus features, I would not recommend getting it. It's mainly for people who want to watch the blob. It's good on that good on that front. But in terms of bonus features, all you really get is new commentaries. Alright, up next is the one that's you no know, stouts. That Scream Factory like quality. The thing. This was the, f I think it was my third Scream Factory release purchase. I love the thing. I love, 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 love this movie. It's a movie to watch at any time of the season. It could be a winter movie or a summer. It depends on what you want it to be. But with the Scream Factory release, I feel like it's more of a winter movie because they added a blue tint to it. It makes it feel more cold. The bonus material, my fucking God. They gave it a separate disc, just like with... Uh, Big Trouble Little China. The disc art is not even... It's his own artwork. That's what I love. It's his own artwork done by Scream Factory. They didn't use the cover art. They didn't use the original poster art. They did their own art. And the picture quality, the 2K scan. Oh, it's actually supervised. This one is supervised. And it looks fucking great. Coming in at $20... This is probably another perfect Screen Factory release. If you love the thing, please get this release. You'll see what I mean. It is amazing. Fucking gorgeous. And last but not least, uh, for my single releases is Trick or Treat. Another Michael Doherty film. Uh, love this movie. I watch it every Halloween. Um, this this uh, looks way better than the original Blu-ray release. I'll tell you that. I had the original Blu-ray release and this is infinitely better. Uh, the bonus materials you get in this, while light, are very intriguing and interesting. Uh, I paid fifteen dollars for this. This feels like a fifteen. This this does feel like a premium release, but I kind of wish, in my opinion, they would have done a bit more with Trick or Treat. But the artwork is very beautiful on the cover, and I do love the fact that you use this artwork for the reversible side. Uh, you get. Just like Bubba Hotep, a still picture of the movie, which I w really would have wished they would have used the artwork from the cover, but that's just me. Um, it is a pretty decent release from, uh, if you're a big fan of Trick or Treat like I am, $25, is, I mean, $15 is a pretty good price for it, and I did 
Hopefully you're lucky enough to get the slip cover like I did. Just saying. All right, so that's all my single releases, but what about the box set? Well, let's take a look at my Screen Factory box set. So this one I did an unboxing for, and a lot of people seem to enjoy it. This is my Friday the 13th Screen Factory release. This one comes in at $170. I think I paid $150 on sale. I don't know if it's still on sale or not. But what you get with this is every single Jason Voorhees movie from the Friday the 13th, the first one, all the way down to the remake. Now, I've already done an unboxing of this in my first and um, my thoughts on it. All the transfers are good up until Jason X. The reason for this, because Jason X is not a screen, well, not Jason, Freddy vs. Jason. Freddy vs. Jason, and actually, yeah, I think. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, 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 I was right. So, the Freddy vs. Jason and Friday the 13th the remake is not screen factory releases. They are just repackages. So, that kind of brings it down a bit. But if you're a Friday the 13th fan, I mean, it does have a nice artwork. It looks great on the shelf. I would recommend it, if, like I said, if you're a big Friday the 13th fan. And it does come with a huge selection of bonus materials in it. And they actually do single cases, which I do prefer. And when you get it, they're not like traditional screen fighter. They actually do like the original poster design. But all, all of them except 10 out of the 12 are screen fighter releases. Freddy vs. Jason and Jason X, not well, Jason X, but the remake, are just normal releases. I can see, I'll show you. So when you open up Freddy vs. Jason, even though it says Scream on the side, the disc is literally just the original Blu-ray release. When you open up Friday, uh, Friday the 13th Remake, you see Scream right there. Open it up. Literally the old school ass design, which kind of makes me upset because I really wanted this to be like a complete <laughs> like release, you know what I mean? But it is what it is. It is whatever. It is a good set to have if you're a Jason Voorhees fan like I am, but I wouldn't really rush out to get it I mean, it's not even running out of stock. It's still widely available. It's not the Halloween release. It's actually still in stock. So if you want to get it, go ahead. If not, I understand. And if you do get it, please order your replacement disc. These are the original discs that were in the set. And they had issues when it came out. If you contact Scream, showing them your proof of purchase, they will send you free disc. Well, they'll send you replacement disc for absolutely free, but it'll take a week or two. So keep that in mind. But yeah, those are all my Screen Factory releases um, reviewed. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys next time.